Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Today, we are checking out some Ghost Recon Breakpoint PvP. So I went to Paris a couple of weeks back on the hottest day of the year. It was 40 degrees C. So you know what? Great day to be inside an office playing <laughs> new video games. So a big thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video, taking me out there. And if you wanna know more about the game for yourself, you can click on the link down in the description below. So then, what are we looking at here? Well, this is called Ghost War, and the PvP in Breakpoint is four versus four. In Wildlands, if you played that game, PvP was added later on in the game's development, but in this game, PvP will be available at launch, and this time around, they've got custom-made maps. In Wildlands, as I remember, the maps were taken from existing parts of the main game, and they retrofitted them into multiplayer maps. Well, this time around in Breakpoint, we've got custom made multiplayer maps from the ground up. So it's a much more handcrafted, tailor-made experience from the get-go. As it's the first time that you guys are seeing this, I thought that I would just tell you a bit about the game and the game mode itself. So 4v4, as I mentioned, it's best of three. We've got multiple maps, which can be nighttime or daytime. There's actually a really cool setup for the match too, where you could customize everything that you wanted to set up in the game. You can change things like the round formats, the map, obviously the time of day. You can change what weather you want, which is kind of neat. You can turn the surveillance system on or off, and I'll tell you more about that in a bit. The revive system, do you want that on? Do you want marking on? Do you want marking by drones on? Friendly fire, sound markers, etc. There's a deep level of customization here for people to set up the game however they like. If you want a more hardcore experience, then you could do that. If you just wanted the standard experience and fire it up away you go you can do that too bit of a mix that option is there for you and i think that if the players of this community wanted to create kind of a esport rule set on their own then there's enough customization there for them to do that so as you can see these maps are large scale especially for four players and there's an element of setup time at the beginning because obviously you spawn on different sides of the maps and there's rocks that you can go up into there's buildings in the middle there's buildings on the outskirts so there can be this moment of setup and deciding between yourselves as a team how do you want to play this are you going to do a 2-2 two -two split on either side of the map are you going to send everyone into the middle are you just going to have one guy who's the lone sniper up in the snowy mountain doing a bit of overwatch for you and you may have seen me already picking up a few things from off the ground so there is loot so to speak in this and you can pick things off the ground like drones intel grenades adrenaline shots and also your class item which could be something like a sensor launcher on the sharpshooter class or the cloaking spray on the panther class so whilst you do have your weapons and your grenades which you go in with there are additionals that you can pick up as for the drones well i remember in wildlands pvp the drones were just so overpowered and it felt like they were just in the air all the time and you were constantly spotted but now with this being something that you have to actually go and find and pick up it felt like a more reasonable use of them and when you're flying these things around the enemy are notified of them and they can easily shoot them down you can shoot enemy drones down too and you can use them to spot or ping where enemies are but of course it doesn't take many bullets to shoot these things down out the sky so i didn't feel like i was spotted all the time and on the minimap all the time like it fell in wildlands at certain moments. After a few minutes to push the players together and apply a bit of pressure, the play zone of the map starts to shrink and that's that blue thing that you can see on the background there. I wouldn't class this as a battle royale mode though because you do get quite a lot of time to fight and get into a decent position before this starts to happen. It's really towards the end of the round when people need to be pushed together to actually try and fight each other and kill each other. And similar to what they had in Wildlands, if a teammate goes down, you will have the opportunity to revive them. So you get these really clutch moments where maybe it's a one versus three and you take a couple of enemy players out and then you go about reviving your teammates and the whole game flips on its head suddenly and it looked like you were the underdog. You pull off a clutch play, get a couple of revives in and suddenly the tables are turned. Stamina and healing play a big part here too. So there is no unlimited sprint. You have a stamina meter and that goes down and you will tie yourself out if you deplete it. And also no regenerating health. If you take damage, you've got to use bandages and syringes. That takes time and you've got to find a window to do that and apply that animation. In terms of the classes that you can play, we had three options. We had assault, sharpshooter and panther. 
and they all had different class items and class abilities. There were also a load of perks that you can choose and customize. There was a ton of customization there for your character, so you could add perks which might increase damage on pistols or increase the range of guns, the accuracy of guns just in general, your resistance to injuries, your health regen speed, but if you pick that you might get minus 50 health stuff like explosive damage, drone evasion, so there's a ton of customization options here for your guy. You pick your class, you pick your class perks. Your class ability, well if you look on the bottom left there's a meter with Z underneath it. You build that class ability meter up by doing stuff in the game, getting kills, objectives, whatever it might be. And the devs said that the reason that they've gone for that is because they want to encourage people doing stuff rather than camping and waiting over time for an ability to just passively recharge so in this game if you want to get that class ability you've got to be proactive and out there doing things one other thing that i haven't mentioned so far too is gunsmith and within that you've got this nice exploded view of your gun where you can change the magazine the muzzle the rail the sights the under barrel and then on top of that there's also upgrades for your gun which you craft from parts that you can find in the game so it's obvious that a lot of thought has gone into the massive amount of options for the player here. And it will be really interesting to see what people choose and what the team composition of what each match is going to look like. And you've got player customization too, with this being a Ghost Recon game. You've got headgear, vest, handwear, like gloves, your pants, your footwear. What's great about this is that all of your progression is shared across PvP and PvE. Your character's XP level, class ranks and equipment level, that's all shared as well as your belongings like your gear, your weapons, your customization items. But the devs did say in a presentation that we got before we actually played the game that there is an element of balance in the PvP. So you can't take in really overpowered gear into the PvP and just crush a new player. It doesn't work like that. They didn't go into specifics but there are balancing things in place when the game launches to make sure that... If you're a new player and you're going up against someone who's got insane level gear because they've been grinding in PvE, you're not going to be at a big disadvantage there. In total, I played around five rounds of this and I have to say it was a lot of fun. It felt very tactical. It was cool hitting those long range sniper shots. In this game, the guns are projectiles, so it's not hit scan. You've got a lead target. You've got to account for a bit of drop, etc. And the graphics look really nice. I mean, the snow map in particular just gave me this feeling of a vast play space and I quite enjoyed that being able to go wherever I wanted and set up in unusual positions with a sniper rifle. The terrain system that they've got here too is quite interesting because if you've got a really steep slope you can't just sprint at full speed up it and likewise you can't sprint down a really steep slope because you're going to end up tumbling over at the bottom. So it's got more of a realistic movement model than other PvP games have and watching the footage you should pick up on some of that incidental animation as I'm moving over specific terrain. And of course the nighttime maps, night vision comes into play and it just looks really cool fighting in night vision goggles to be honest with you. I did say that I would talk about the surveillance system too. So on all of the maps, if you haven't turned it off, there is a surveillance system usually in the center of the map and really exposed. And if you go up to it and interact with it, I think it took like five to 10 seconds or something and you complete it, the enemy's positions will be marked for you for a certain amount of time. But of course, going for that is a big risk because it's so open, but it's a big reward if you manage to pull it off. Overall, I have to say that I had fun here. I was playing on PC with mouse and keyboard. There were plenty of options in the controls for sensitivity. It felt nice on the mouse as well. The gunplay was pretty satisfying. The only downsides for me really would be that the PvP in Breakpoint still doesn't have a proper first person only mode. And I understand that the game hasn't been designed that way. It's a third person cover shooter. You're supposed to be able to see your character with all of their cool tactical gear and weapons. But I would love to have a dedicated first person mode in this game. And also I feel like the rounds could be just a little bit shorter than they were. Maybe have that play space just shrink a little bit sooner than they've currently got it. But that's just a preference for me. And that's it guys. Like I said, I only played like five rounds of this, but I did have fun as I mentioned. I think they've made some good improvements over the Wildlands PvP. Mainly the fact that it feels like you can shoot and not be spotted all of the time. And there's not drones everywhere because you've got to pick those things up now. So I like that definite improvement there. And the system that they've got here with the custom matches, it's just really cool that you can change everything like that. 
But we'll see. I'm definitely looking forward to playing this some more when the beta comes out and of course the main game. And once again, a big thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and there should be a link down in the description below with a ton more information about the game if you want to click on it. And that's all guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.